I went to Manchester Metropolitan, which is now back to being called Manchester School of Art, where I did interactive art and also a foundation degree in fine art. And so I did a lot of action painting, which involved putting a lot of paint on the floor and then skidding across it, which they really buzzed off. They really liked all that. And, you know, I was quite young at the time. And I thought, well, you know, they seem to like it. But then if you show anybody, or if you look at it yourself, afterwards, you just end up with a load of messy paint. And there's nothing satisfying about that. And you've not really learnt anything, you've just had a good mess around. But I've been doing painting all the time anyway. It's just that they didn't really approve of painting. And they always tried to stop me from painting. But they asked a lot of questions which then informed things later on, I suppose. Like, they sort of persuaded me to make my own paint, even though it's something I was sort of working towards anyway. I like to mix my own paint, so I have control over it. But it also has a little control over me. If you mill it too much, it kind of loses its life. And it doesn't have its spongy, spongy, fresh feel about it. And that's why I don't like to from a tube, because it's been squashed. My grandfather was a chemical engineer. And if you saw my technique, he'd probably be disgusted, I think. The very first thing you do, well, once you've stretched the canvas, you, you coat it with size, and then you coat it with gesso, which is <clears throat> the size is made of rabbit skin, and the gesso is made of rabbit skin and um, whiting, which is calcium carbonate, and has it looks very white when it's on its own, but it's an inert pigment, which means it will take on any other colour if you mix something else with it. So you start. You've got your white canvas from the uh, whiting, and then you put a. Not always, but what I like to do is put an imprimatur on it, which is the thin coat of neutral coloured paint, like dark like grey or brown. And then leave that to dry before you start doing a sketch on it with a, with a dark colour. And then you, so you sketch it out in a sort of blue or something. And then the next coat is called an ala prima. In that layer, I like to use browns and earth colours, which are usually iron-based, and they dry quickly to get my sort of tones in the painting all done. Imagine a line going down your nose and another line going across your eyes. We call that line the meridian, we'll call that the equator. And then the, if you look at a landscape where the sky meets the earth, that's your horizon. And your, your vanishing point will be on the horizon. And here's your little railway tracks, which form an isosceles triangle. And here's your street. There's a little house. And then all these lines apparently are all perpendicular to the horizon and then all vertical. That is fair enough, but it would only apply to a very small area of your vision, and that area we could, uh, we could call the fovea. If you're looking directly at the horizon, which we'll, we'll be doing in the painting of this Manchester skyline, your, hori your, your horizon is in line with your equator. So the horizon is flat, and then anything else around it is going to curve, so your direct line from your left to your right going across your feet and over your head would make a circle, a very large circle, which you don't, you wouldn't be able to see in a painting, in most paintings. They say that is directly looking straight into the sky, so that's sort of this, the line that goes across your head, through your, the 
would bring that be across your feet. And then your horizon would be going up, would be this large circle going around it. So now looking straight up, everything is, you know, a big circle that points to that. So your large buildings going into the sky, their walls all point to the vanishing point. They'll disappear into the sky at that point. Tucker and Jeremy Shine, they're big influences. They made a big impact on Manchester. They really changed it. Ann Tucker could see, Ann Tucker sees the sort of potential and talent around, no matter how conventionally good it is. She appreciates people's effort and it really brings out the best in people's work. Jeremy Shine started the green room Together, they were Manchester, Manchester International Arts. They did Streets Ahead, Garden of Delights, and all that. Without them, without that kind of character that never tires, we were missing something very important. Heidi Schaefer, she's a big influence. She had this contemporary art, you know, conceptual art gallery in her living room, and I'd go and look after it at weekends sometimes. And she showed some. She showed a lot of far out work, but let me clarify things about art and what I don't want to do, but it was important to see that. You've got different kinds of music. You've got some music you want to dance to, some music you want to put on in the background, and there's some music you just listen to, and it can take you from one place to another place. I find music very cathartic. Your head can be full of all kinds of crap. And you can sit down and you can sort of clear it out with a good piece of music, like cleaning your emotions. And this, Arvo Pair, Variations of the Healing of Arianushka, it starts sad, simple, pure sounds, but breaks. And it, it develops and it builds and it changes from minor to major. It's so simple and it follows a simple algorithm, which if you look mathematically in music, that's all it is, it's a series of lots, lots of different algorithms. And you can say the same about painting. It's very minimalist. You can, you can see some of the things in minimalist paintings. This is the same piece of music, following the same simple chord. A little bit more cheerful. I want to get the catharsis through painting, but you can't. I can't do it through painting alone. It needs music. It needs some kind of guide, and that's why I use music so much. first went to Clark Art, I realised this is the context of my painting. If not, I'm not part of this, of a, any other kind of art world. This is the art, this is the kind of paintings that my paintings can actually sit with. It puts it in, in a historical context, in a regional context. Vallette is an incredible teacher of how to paint. And to be next to Vallette and next to Lowry, you feel, I feel like 
I'm actually being appreciated and I have a place in art history which you can't get you can't buy that kind of thing you c it's like all the hard work's been paid off and having a gallery there who's actually interested in art and interested in selling art and getting rid of it with my which is all I want to do I want to paint get rid of the paintings and do the next do the next painting it frees me up just to paint and concentrate on painting.